Danny Garcia, the undefeated light welterweight champ, has registered 28 wins, 16 of them knockouts. Now this rising star of boxing is facing off against lesser-known fighter Rod Sulka at the Barclays Center in New York. I had a chance to talk with Garcia about his upcoming fight, Mayweather, and life outside the ring. Welcome, Danny Garcia. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, and you have a fight uh, against Rod Sulka. Yes, sir. August 9th at the Barclays Center. Live on Showtime. Yeah, this week. Uh, it's, I know you're going to say that you can beat him, mm -hmm. right? So why, what makes you know that you can beat him? Well, what are the weaknesses? I feel like this, you know, I train eight weeks for a fight. I, I prepare myself for, for whatever. And um, I look at it like this. Whoever it is, August 9th, will get beat because I feel like I'm one of the best fighters in the world and, um, and I'm out to prove it. And you're a rising star in boxing. A lot of people look at this fight as a mismatch. Uh, they wonder why you're even fighting Salka at mm -hmm. this stage in your career. Well, how did that come about, and how do you feel about that? You know, um, I faced a lot of big fighters in boxing already. So when people look at, you know, who's this guy? Um, you got to think about it like this, you know. I can't fight Matisse 10 times in a row. You understand? Right. <laughs> right. I can't fight Matisse 10 times in a row because then it was just, you know, you can't have those kind of wars back to back to back. Mm -hmm. But um, I think, you know, August 9th, I know he's going to come prepared, but I'm going to go in there and, and, and do damage. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you mentioned Matisse, incredible fight, uh, and you dominated that fight and won that fight clearly, but. He knocked your mouthpiece out, yeah. and it actually went into the crowd, and you were not phased by that. That was that, after that shot. I knew I won the fight because he hit me with his best shot, and he couldn't hurt me. Mm -hmm. So right there and then, he knew he couldn't knock me out, and he knew as a fighter in his soul, the fight was over. How do you? Are there things that you can do to train to make your chin tougher? I mean, we were talking about Amir Khan mm -hmm. and how when this guy gets hit, he just he's stunned and yeah. he, he doesn't know what to do. But can you prepare for that? I don't know. You know why? Because I, I never not had a good chin. <laughs> you understand? Like my yeah. chin was never weak and got strong. So maybe it's just how you are. You know how you your genetics or something mm -hmm. like that. But I, but if you're in good shape, though, you could take a good punch. But you know it comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. And your dad is hard on you. Oh yeah, when no you, doubt. When you look at in the side of the ring. Uh, it's cool that you brought him here. Yeah. I was so happy uh, to see him. He's hard on you, and he's hard on your opponents. He's a yeah, lot harder. No doubt. Do you ever worry when he says incendiary things? No, I don't worry. I just let him be him because I, I know that. Like, I'm, I'm with him all day, so I know how, how crazy he is and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, it is what it is. But there are other great fighters as well, other great fighters. Roy Jones Jr., who yeah. said that his dad was relentless on yeah. him. Like almost to the point that he could make a grown man cry. Yeah, a lot of a lot of father son relationships are like that in boxing, and uh, I think the most important thing you just gotta let let a person be hit when is when it's not boxing. You just gotta let him be him. You understand? Let him live his regular life, and uh, I think that's why a lot of father son relationships don't work out because when it's not time to fight, to them it's still time to fight. Mm -hmm. So you gotta learn how to separate the two. Mm -hmm. Uh, your family is very close, um, and I understand that you have a lot of outside ventures that yes, involve sir. your family. One thing that you have is the DSG clothing line. Yeah, I got the DSG, uh, the DSG brand, uh, mm -hmm. the clothes, t-shirts, uh, tank tops, hats. Um, you can get that on my website on DSGofficial.com. Okay, and you're also in the music business. Yeah, I got, I you got have a, a recording studio, and, and one of your sisters sings and one sister raps. Yeah, the CNG twins. <laughs> okay. So, yep, the CNG twins. Um, Angelise will actually be singing the national anthem at the fight. Really? Yeah, she your did, sister? Yeah, she did it three times already. She did it in Puerto Rico. She did it at, uh, at, the, Zab, at the Zab fight at the Barclays. And, um, but, yeah, um, I got the recording studio at the, at the, at the shop. And um, that's where they record, and that's where they make their magic. You say at the shop, which is a barber shop yeah, and yeah, an yeah. auto shop. Yeah, it's called DSG. It's a shop. We got the um, barber shop. We got a uh, small mechanic and uh, detail shop. We got uh, the studio where the twins record, and then we got the boxing gym in the back where I'll go to work. Okay. I was talking to somebody who said that they showed up 
mm -hmm. uh, t to your gym in, in North Philly, and you and your dad were in the room with the bar with the barbers. Yeah. And you were telling the barber, "Listen, you need to pick it up. You're not doing a great job." And so you're involved in the day to day management. Oh yeah, I'm involved. Of your business. Yes, sir. I'm involved because at the end of the day, uh, it's my business, and uh, we got to make sure everything is going right. And um, but you know my dad, my dad is there every day. He, he's he's really he's the real boss of that. So right. He's the one that's hard on them. So, um, but I'm there every day. I'm there every day. Okay, uh, it, it's great when you look at boxers uh, and you see that they have these outside interests. What about the whole money aspect? How has fast wealth affected you? I know it wasn't fast for you, but yeah. you went from a period where you're not yeah. making much to six figure amounts. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it definitely um, makes you more comfortable in life. Not, you know, I'm, I'm hungry as a fighter because you got to be hungry, but, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, going to work extra hours to pay the bills and stuff like that. And you could, you know, you can invest your money, you know, give back to your community, uh, make a barbershop in your community and give your friends jobs now and stuff. So, is there a point where you say, okay, I need to stop giving my friends jobs and I've supported the community enough, I don't want to lose my money? Do you worry about that ever? Oh, yeah, no doubt. You always got to be smart. You always yeah. got to have a, um, you always got to spend a little bit on something because at the end of the day, you got to pay the IRS, so you got to have something, you yeah. know, to give back and stuff. Um, but, you know, I'm not worried because I got a good team. You know, I save my money, uh, I pay my taxes and and I got a few businesses and we're just gonna keep doing it and mm -hmm. hopefully get a mostly uh, corporation. Well, and you know, you're really on your way to the point that you will be doing multi-million dollar purses if you continue to win. Uh, Floyd Mayweather is a guy that I believe you should get a shot at some point. Do you think that will happen? He's only got, what, a, a year think, and a half? I think left? anything could happen. To be honest with you, I think anything can happen in boxing. Um, it's just up to the, the managers and the promoters and whatever fits the um, the best for that for that event. Then that's what they do. What are the fights that you would like to see happen in the next two years for you? Yeah, you know, I just want to continue. I just want to fight the best fights. But do you have people that you would like to fight more than others? Not really, because boxing is just like it changes so fast. Like, I could say I want to fight you, then you get knocked off, and no, it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, that's a perfect example. Like, I could say I want to fight you, right. and then you get matched up with somebody else, and then you lose, so my, my fight with you is just is, is history. So it's just like, I just want to fight the best fights. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, be, it's great to have a boxer sitting in front of you because you love to ask other questions. I mean, you're more qualified than most of the commentators in the sport. Do you believe that Mayweather will fight Pacquiao? I don't know. I don't know. I think, if it, I think to be honest with you, I think if the fight was going to happen, it would have been happening already. I think this is a fight where I think it's going on five, six years already that people wanted to see. Yeah. And... Uh, I think, you know, I think both fighters are just doing their own thing right now, to be honest with you. I don't think, I think if it would have happened, it would have been happened, but I don't think, I don't think it's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, how does that affect boxing? Because you have competition from UFC and mm -hmm. MMA and... I don't think, I don't think it'll affect boxing because there's a lot of young stars like me coming up as a new generation. And um, yeah, people would have loved to see the fight, you know, but at the end of the day, Boxing is, there's always young stars and there's yeah. always somebody to take that place. So, you know, they're getting older now and it's a new generation now. Yeah, and there really is a new generation. I mean, you and Matisse and Alvarez yeah. and all of these young people uh, come in. What do you think about Bernard Hopkins? He's on oh, the other end of the spectrum. Oh, man, but Should, not. Shouldn't he quit? He, I don't know, man, because he just keeps winning. <laughs> <laughs> he can't lose. So. That's a trick but question he, right he, there. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's um, you know, he's, he's 48, I think, 49, and yeah. he's beating young guys, so why, why stop? Well, why stop is the concern of the protection yeah, of your brain. Yeah, but, you know, he's not getting hit. <laughs> yeah, he, but, he, you know, uh, that's something you had to ask him. Yeah. But, you know, as far as me, I think he, you know, he's a legend. He's a great fighter, and, hey... 
Is that something that you're concerned about, uh, is concussions? I mean, I know there's a lot of research now, particularly the Cleveland mm -hmm. Clinic is doing a lot yeah. around that. Do you worry about your brain in the future? Um, yeah, of course. Of course, of course I worry. Um, what do you do to protect You just got to work on defense, <laughs> to be honest with you. But, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the point of boxing is, you know, you have to make your legacy in the game, but at the end of the day, you want to make your money and you want to walk away, you know, safe, wealthy, and make sure you can talk good and everything, and everything's fine. What do you want to do at the end of, like, when your career is over? I think I wanna, I wanna, I wanna train fighters. I wanna okay. train fighters. I wanna train fighters. To be honest with you, I wanna, I wanna build champions. Okay, well you, you, you got a guy training you now that's pretty good. Yeah, so yeah. So we could team up. All right. <laughs> he could be that teacher. I could be the coach. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot. We look forward to this fight. Uh, I'd love to have you come back because I know you're uh, going to be doing probably a bigger fight at some no point. So you're not, are you a little frustrated? Nah, about because, this? Cause, nah, because at the end of the day, every fight, when you hear Danny Garcia, is a big fight. When you hear Danny you Garcia. Are you going for the knockout? I always go for the knockout. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I always go for the knockout. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. With Danny Garcia, I'm Lee Hawkins. See you next time.